Like Miles before it, Spider-Man 2 loads quickly. Fire up the game from the PS5's home menu, and you're dropped back into the game world within seconds. It's so fast, it almost feels as if it was simply suspended in the background. It loads with minimal delay. They've leveraged these technologies in additional ways, however, to enhance the experience beyond what was possible in those cross-generation prequels. First off, there's traversal speed. There's this moment during the game's introductory sequence where Sandman grabs Spider-Man and hurls him across the map. The speed at which this occurs is disarming at first. Despite the ultra-dense urban location, the game seems to effortlessly handle flying across the map at a ridiculous speed. But it's just a taste. You're quickly given access to the web wings, as they're called, which completely change the pace of traversal in a positive way. Basically, while swinging remains Spider-Man's primary means of transport, you can now tap the triangle button to spread your wings and glide across the city. Flying across the map while trying to maintain altitude even creates a similar feeling you might get from linking together manual combos in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. This also enables the developers to deliver some rather fancy transitional tricks. Like here, after completing a mission as Miles, the game then seamlessly pulls the camera back, soars all the way across the city, before eventually parking itself on a perch waiting for Peter. Both the speed of flight and the camera work itself are tremendous. Basically, the game can now pan across the entire world at a high speed, creating an almost worst case scenario for the game's level of detail systems, yet somehow it all manages to feel remarkably stable. The level of visible detail has been pushed out significantly. In fact, there seems to be a new midpoint between the near field detail and distant detail, and as a result, overall world density has been boosted with less in the way of flat buildings and visible pop-in. This applies to dynamic objects as well, and the best way to showcase it involves comparisons. So for this, I decided to use the remastered version of the first Spider-Man game running in quality mode on PS5. The time of day settings do not match up between the two games, but I selected a similar time of day. In the near field, I found that Spider-Man 2 presents a more densely populated world. Yes, traffic patterns, they are random, but the sequel presents more cars and pedestrians at any point, giving the impression of a more lively inhabited city. Just walking down the street reinforces this perception and it represents a significant boost. Oh, and while we're looking at the cars, I should mention that they seem to have added an actual suspension system to the vehicles. While cars did react somewhat in the prior game, they now behave much more realistically when Spider-Man lands on them. And any scenes that involve driving on top of or behind a car really showcase this well. But there's more to the city detail than just this. If you look out across the cityscape, pay attention to the buildings. There now exists both additional geometric detail as well as an increase in material variety. It now manages to shake that feeling of countless textured boxes serving as the city. Plus there's more dynamic lights in the scene and light maps are presented better at a distance. So the whole thing just looks more coherent. Looking at it, however, I can kind of understand why initial reactions to the trailers were mixed. It still very much is designed to look like the prior games, artistically. But as I discovered, once you get in there and look closely at everything, it's clear that they've taken this design and pushed out the detail levels across the board. There's both far more detail in the distant cityscape, as well as in the nearby park, which is now overflowing with life in Spider-Man 2. There's other detail improvements as well, such as large-scale occlusion. The area beneath these trees, for instance, in the park appear properly darkened and shadowed in Spider-Man 2, which you would expect from an area shrouded in vegetation, but it wasn't something we saw in the prior two games. But the fact that all of this detail just sort of loads in without any significant visible pop-in, though there is still some, it allows the game to just feel much more stable overall from a visual perspective. Now, the other area where the game's fast loading systems are used might be familiar to fans of the recent Ratchet and Clank. Remember, when this game first arrived, Insomniac showed off these portal jumping sequences, right? Very impressive. But the thing is, when you jump into these portals connecting to different environments, there was this staging period between them where Ratchet sort of floats in space. Well, they've overcome this in Spider-Man 2, and there's now multiple points where portals are used, allowing players to seamlessly move between two completely different environments without any sort of interstitial middle section. It's an impressive accomplishment. 
When considering the speed of traversal, the fast loading, and the increased level of detail, I feel we're looking at a game that simply wouldn't be feasible on the last generation PlayStation 4. So this is kind of a quote unquote next gen game. It's a case where more capable hardware is used to enhance the overall game experience rather than just the visuals.